Why during the 1950s did something happen that resulted in a 70 year stagnation in a field called quantum gravity? Quantum gravity is like a startup that cannot ship a product after 70 years. And it's still taken over in theoretical physics as sort of the prestige theory field. And quantum gravity, is is there an application for this that they were attempting to achieve? It's not a precursor to technology so far as we know. But what happened was quantum gravity was a replacement for something that used to be known as the unified field. So Einstein wasn't chasing quantum gravity. He was chasing unified field theory. That fell out of favor. Unified field theory becomes sort of like a joke, old-timey expression for the future of physics. And we substituted quantum gravity for the merger of quantum theory, quantum field theory, quantum mechanics, and gravitational physics under general relativity. How is it that the field became convinced that something which clearly doesn't seem to work and has had all of the resources, all of the best minds at its disposal, it sucks up everything, and it, it just doesn't work? To be specific, yeah. like how many people are working on this problem? And how many people have been working on this problem for 70 years without progress? I would say that the period between 1953 and 73, there are parallel things. Quantum gravity is not the mainstream at all, okay? So real physics is happening between 53 and 73 by anybody's understanding of it, okay? Okay. Uh, one single individual who is the most dominant mind on planet Earth at the moment, uh, effectively Voldemort, the person whose name we are a little bit afraid to invoke and, and cause wrath, said in 1984, no, string theory is the way. This anomaly cancellation was unexpected, and it clearly points to the fact that we are, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to quantize. Who's that bit. person? Edward Witten. And in physics circles, you're not allowed to bring this guy up? No, we talk about him. Everybody talks about him. But to challenge him? Think about Agent Smith. Think about playing one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan in his prime. Like, He's that good. Joe, I don't think, I, I'm dumb enough not to be intellectually afraid of anyone else on planet Earth at this point. I am terrified of this person. Really? And has never made contact with the physical world. So it's like one of the greatest conundrums. So, so, so let me get back to how crazy. What do you mean by never made contact? No Nobel Prize, never predicted something that turned out to be true, never pointed us to do an experiment that was then validated. So 100% of his efforts have been not making contact with physical reality. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, like you have people like Michio Kaku who are in the string theoretic school. Mm -hmm. Sean Carroll is very sympathetic to it. Mm -hmm. You need to understand this story. 1957 conference at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, one of the most eminent mathematician physicists, guy who was first ranked at Cambridge, was a guy named uh, Hermann Bondi, an Austrian, I think, mathematician. And his paper is about negative mass in general relativity. If you have two masses, in general, they always attract each other gravitationally. But what if somehow you had a different kind of mass that was negative, just like you could have negative and positive charges? Oddly, the negative mass is still attracted just the same way to the positive mass as if it, there was no difference. But the positive mass is always repelled. So you get this weird solution where the negative mass chases the positive mass and they go off to like, you know, unbounded acceleration. So Bondi was thinking about why is it that we've got these artificial conditions in general relativity, which we impose by hand. They're not the same beautiful marble that Einstein used for his field equation. But we throw some extra crappy stuff in called positivity conditions to stop general relativity from giving us madness. So Bondi started asking the question, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe what you think of as madness has meaning. And this is why this, this conference, which is a confluence of the two families, the Wittens and the DeWitts, with Feynman and Wheeler and all of these unbelievable characters in attendance. Before, sorry, before, before you go, Eric, I was actually wondering uh, specifically when we'll hear like a debate uh, with uh, you and Theo and Timothy about G. Sorry, who's Theo? Uh, Timothy and Theo, they put out the retort to- Sorry, Jim who's Theo? Yeah. Uh, Theo Pulia 
in Timothy. Yeah, Wynn? I'm not. A, I'm not aware of Theopolia. Where did, we don't uh, know who he is. Yeah, we have who's to know Theopolia? Who he is. Uh, do you know who Timothy Wynn is? Let's talk about Theopolia. Who's Theopolia? He's the co-author from the paper. Who is with he? Timothy Wynn. Yeah, who is he? I don't know. That that wasn't the question, though. No, right? That is the question. No, the question was no. That is going... the question. No, you you're not just... understanding. You yeah, no, you're not understanding me. I've never heard in the history of physics anybody expecting to be taken seriously as an anonymous uh, critic. And the behavior of those gentlemen, however many there are, two or more, including uh, various misogynistic comments against my colleagues, um, disrespecting Sabina Hassenfelder, who... Uh, while she may be a critic, is also a friend of mine. I'm fucking sick of these two people, assuming it is two people. Maybe it's... But we don't know what Theopolia is. Great. So, so, sorry. I mean, characters no, aside, no, no. So, there is a yeah, paper uh, that was put out rebutting geometric unity, right? No, there so, wasn't a paper that was put out rebutting geometric unity. There was an attempt to publish something on the archive, which was rejected that attempted to get in front of the draft that I put out, specifically uh, looking at the text messages uh, that were found on the server that supports these people to, quote, make me cry, close quote. So with all due respect, um, these people guessed that I was having a chiral theory. It's not a chiral theory, so they're talking about chiral anomalies because they didn't wait to hear what I was going to say. They asserted that I was going to bring space-time supersymmetry in 14 dimensions. They try to cast dispersions uh, on the fact that uh, there's non-compact groups involved, which come naturally from spin 1, comma 3. So what you're talking about is a phenomenon where people are trying to exploit a situation in order to make a name for themselves. And you'll notice that many people from that Discord server are trying to get people like you to react to me, to make, to name these names. Well, no, no, no you're not. A, I'm going to mute you if you don't keep it up. All right, you're muted now. I think you're not understanding what I'm saying. Standards, and we don't allow anonymous people to pull bullshit like this. And we don't allow people in general to go around making a name for themselves by being... Um, obnoxious, misogynistic, manipulative, it's fucking enough. And this isn't very high quality critique. So my feeling about this is um, we, can, we can talk about this some other way, but the, the, the key feature of this little drama is to try to get me to mention their server. And the whole way it got started was the people on an informal ser server uh, that was set up for me that we should not tolerate bad behavior in our colleagues. And so when server kicked out a bunch of these people, you got something like, you know, the archive meets 4chan. And 4chan is not going, 4chan doesn't have a future in science. May I jump real quick, please? Actually, I'm, I'm kind of irritated. Like, right. I'm, I'm here I on understand. stage with people. Yeah, but, like, I don't want to be subjected to this. Okay, can I just say a couple of things really fast, though, please? Yeah, but I'm about to go walk my dog, so. Which I strongly support, because dogs are literally the best things in the world. But, um, so first, I didn't actually know who they were until after I tried to read your paper. And I tried to parse through and understand what you were talking about with the Shiab operator stuff and, like, like, and then I found out who they were, and then I found out that there was no discussion between, and, and there's been no, like, private or public, I haven't heard of any way of coming back in arguing against their critique. And I'm not saying that it's them in particular. I don't care Who's about these people. No, you're not understanding me yet. I'm not putting up with misogyny. I'm talking about the math, and I'm not Eric. Putting up, and I'm, I'm not putting up with threats against my family. I'm not you putting shouldn't. up with any of the stupid shit that that server engages in. Capiche? Great. Am I, I clear? Agree, Eric. I agree. You should not be subjected to any character assassination. You should not be subjected to threats. That's bullshit. I think we can all agree with that. 
I'm talking strictly about the mathematics. No, I'm talking strictly, and I said something to you. Rape jokes aren't funny. Are we clear? Who thinks they're funny? I agree. That server. Uh, great. So they shouldn't be listened to. But there's no, still a mathematical I don't deal with problem. that server. You're not understanding me repeatedly. I don't deal with people from that server. Okay, then just talk to me about your theory. And like, are, like I want to know if there's like, so is there going to be a follow-up? That, that's the first question. I mean, I'm following it up. Right. So like there, I, I'm really looking forward to this because so first of all, I think that alternate theories are great. Uh, I'm not saying that they're not. I like listening to alternate theories, but I don't like when theories are rebutted and then there's no counter argument. And I'm not, I don't care if they're awful people because if they are, they are. I'm sorry that this is happening to you and that they're being awful. I, I'm really sorry for that. But looking strictly at the actual mathematics of it, I just want more. Like, like you talk about the Shiop operator, but you, you just say, if it can be so defined in the paper. And I, like, I, I just, there's nothing, there's nothing for me to really sink my teeth into when I'm trying to parse through this paper. It just doesn't, it feels like it's not really saying things. And I want to know because it seems like such a cool idea. You know what I mean? So I, I just want to like, even if you don't talk to them about it, is there a time that we'll get to hear more about what this theory is more fleshed out. Well, if Eric's gone silent. Um, hey, yeah, I'm back. Guys. Oh, there's Brian. Uh, Great. Yeah, I'm in the mountains. Yeah, actually, you know, the title of the room is uh, Let's Talk About Physics. <clears throat> so I, I really, you know, I really want to stick to physics and I want to make sure that we do have enough time to get to questions about physics. So let's move into that domain and stop talking about uh, squabbles and so forth. I think Eric's I've been on record enough about this. We don't need to really go through it. Uh, it's talking about four months worth of discussions. Right, look, I'm just going to be very clear about this. Um, there are a bunch of sick people on a server yeah. having a lot of fun making fun of Sabina Hassenfelder, myself, anybody, uh, women that I deal with, um, misgendering the, the hell out of people. And this server that I'm talking about got started because I wasn't going to tolerate any of that bullshit on my server. So now you've got PhDs who think that 4chan is the wave of science in the future. And I don't think I could be more clear about this. Rape jokes aren't funny. Doxing isn't funny. Threatening people's families aren't funny. Uh, misgendering people isn't funny. Misogyny isn't funny. Funny and fuck this shit. So Joseph, thank you for, with all due respect, uh, I'm interested in having conversations about differential geometry and quantum field theory. I'm not interested in empowering a bunch of freakish people to be badly behaved and threaten my family. Period. The end. Great. I strongly support Eric. I really, I, he's gone. But the point was his paper is about physics right it's a it's a it's a theoretic like it's a mathematical physics paper and like right the joke, <laughs> if you asked him that if he's going to debate this one guy who's real and, no 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 uh, that right brian that's not what i was saying is not debate like if he doesn't want to debate those two people that's fine whether they're even two people or not that's fine but like the paper itself is still a paper right i mean we live in the sure. scientific world and there's okay. been no rebuttal to the critique of his so work. Here's, here's what happened because they actually contacted me and, and they tried to troll me into it and, and Lex Friedman into it and they copied us and anyway and Joe Rogan uh, was involved they, they wanted to get on all of our podcasts and have it's clear that they're you know so there's legitimate scientific criticism which I think you are and you are uh, you know in favor of and that's fine I think you can yes. propose that people for a long time were saying oh Eric didn't propose anything he hasn't written anything down it's just nonsense he just goes on Rogan's show or Brian's podcast or Lex Friedman and just says all this stuff um, then he published published in the in the sense that it appeared on the archive or uh, in PRD, right? So it's it's just, it's on a website. It's on a server. You have to go and submit your email or, you know, you can find it somewhere. Um, or you can get it on uh, the interview I did with him. But um, so it's not that, and neither is their paper that go and Tim, uh, that's not published. Right. But, but, you know, so is there something legitimate there? Yes, there's, there's, there's some legitimate criticism there. But I think what happens is if I say to you, 
Joseph, you know what? You're a piece of crap, and blah, 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 and you're a shit. Blah, blah, blah. And oh, by the way, you know, you're teaching the way you teach Newtonian mechanics there at, in Louisiana. That is, uh, you know, you should really be using uh, like the MKS units. Like, there's something legitimate there, but the minute you you do something, it makes it very hard for me to take seriously what you're saying, even if there's legitimacy to one one out of the four things that you're saying. So. Eric did release after their paper, so to speak, came out. He released this write-up of GU, which people were complaining since 2013 to do. And he did promise on my show that he would release, and he did on April Fool's Day. And then people said it's a joke, and you can't take him seriously. So, um, so anyway, it's legitimate. He's, you know, it's been a month since he put this out. Uh, I think he's gonna, res- you know, he is responding. He is talking about serious issues, but I think. He is not obliged to respond in his mind, and I can't read his mind, but I think he's he's perplexed more, not by their reactions to what, you know, to, to the shortcomings of his theory uh, before it was written down by him, Joseph, but but rather to the to the lack of attention that the pa- that his paper has received. Now, to that, I don't know. Can you still hear me? I'm driving still. Through. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so I've responded to him as a professional professor of physics for 17 years. I've said to him, man, I love you, but you know what? I've never had a paper just get through publication after submit. Actually, it happened once. Uh, I never I never submitted a paper, and it was just like, oh, this is brilliant, accepted, no revisions needed. It happened once. I've written 212 papers. Never happened except that one time. So, um, so I said, Eric, I love you. I'm going to help you out any way I can. You have to defend the hell out of your paper. I can't speak in more forceful language because I got one of my kids in the car. You have to defend your paper. You have to go on the offensive with your paper. You have to – submitting it is the first step. You have to go on, a, on – you know, and go out there and, and promote it like you're selling a book. And, but it's not just selling it because if you believe in it and it's accurate, you have to go out there. You can't just expect because you built a better mousetrap – that the world's going to come to it. I believe there's truth in GU. I don't. Uh, I don't fully understand all of its intricacies, but I believe that he has to go on the uh, offensive, and he mean, needs to do that, and not wait passively for the world to beat their way to his door. And I've told him this, and I'm working with him to do that. He's going to hopefully come and visit me again, as he has. He has a standing uh, position here at UCSD um, to uh, as a visiting position. So I'm working with him. Uh, but you know, this is not an orthodox. Uh, way of doing things but we're not in orthodox times and he views this as a, as a mission that he's that he's on so i think it's a sore point that particular result that you brought up and to frame it like are you going to debate them i think that that is certainly something that triggers but um but i think you know he's done a tremendous amount it's been a month since this is out don't forget Sure. And I, so I wasn't trying to be aggressive. He just he just keeps dropping out. And I wanted to get in before he jumped out again. Right. So, oh, I guess, I guess, yeah. yeah. And then, okay. yeah, like, I, I totally understand. Like, th- there shouldn't be character assassinations in this realm anyway. Right. Like, we're all scientists. We all mess up constantly. Like, it's a fact of life and we need to, like, do our best. But right. but my question is, like, th- that's just the thing, though, is that if like it feels like he's touting the theory, but the theory doesn't have content yet. And that's what is driving me crazy as a mathematician is that like, well, here's, here's the problem that I see ah. is that he'll, he'll present it, Joseph. And then they'll say, Oh, this is just Petit Salam. And I'm like, well, nobody's saying like Abdus Salam wasn't a good physicist. Right. You know, like, like in other words, they'll either say it's, it's simplistic and it's been done before. Or they'll say he's giving no detail. Choose one guys. You can't say that it's, it's, it's been done before. Uh, and then, and simultaneously say it lacks mathematical rigor. Or it's SU five, or it's SO ten. Like you got to choose it. And by the way, I'm just an experimentalist. I, I I'm a simple experimental right. cosmologist, right? So so look through it, see if uh, like if you do see it's you know I get these comments in my YouTube channel whenever he's on. Oh, it's just Petit Salam, you know, and it's uh, it's not novel at all. So he shouldn't be getting this attention. You shouldn't be giving it to him. Then I'll see. Oh, it's not even a theory. Like Keating, don't you know the definition of a of a theory and I'll be like, do you understand deductive versus inductive hypothesis? <laughs> you know? um, but let's, let's move on. Joseph, thank you very much. It's clear that you're, you know, you came at it from, you know, the perspective of, of you know, trying to approach it as a mensch, not, not trying to hurt his feelings. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's just, you know, it, it is a sense of size. I have seen some virulent, extremely 4chan-esque things that have scared me. Uh, um, same. And- I'm not here. What's that? I, same. I'm not here for it. I just, uh, no, I care about the mathematical. Rate. 